Hi, Hado Inc here. We had a bit of a technical glitch when recording this episode, and it continues on into the next episode that's going up next week. Uh, Vicky's mic didn't record properly, so what you're going to be hearing is a slightly worse quality version of her audio. It's all fixed the week after next, but for these next two videos, she's going to sound a bit off. The information about the games, though, still top quality, so I'd really recommend you stick around. Anyway, let's get on with Star Wars Episode 1 Racer. Hello, and welcome to Big Nostalgia with me, Vicstar. And me, Haddo Enk. This week, we are looking at, drumroll please, Star Wars Racers! God, that peaked my mind. Yeah, <laughs> it's all good, it's all good. So, of course, Star Wars. If you've been living under a rock for, like, the last 30, 40 years and don't know what Star Wars is, Star Wars is a very, very, very popular film franchise which has branched out into games, merchandise, TV series, the lot. Uh, sci-fi based and of course this one follows star, particularly Star Wars 1 which is the start of the uh, the Skywalker like series following dear old Anakin Skywalker as our, as our main protagonist in the pod racing but that's only if you've never heard of Star Wars before <laughs> and if you have heard of Star Wars you'll know that this is pod racing well, it's technically called Star Wars Racers in this. Um, that was actually because that pod racing, uh, they couldn't do it due to the copyright of pod, which is ridiculous. So that's why, unfortunately, it's just racers rather than pod racers, like they really wanted it to. So really a missed opportunity to um, not ha include like foot racers, seat wheels racers, starship, starship racers. racers. Yeah, they could have done a whole series, really, yeah. rather than just racers. But uh, uh, this game we're, of course, looking at on the N64 version, but was brought out on the Microsoft Windows, Nintendo 64, Game Boy Color, Macintosh, and Dreamcast. A Ooh. very big range of platforms. It, yeah. was, it was released on the N64 by LucasArts in the EU in June... June the 4th, 1999. And, yeah, it uh, obviously followed the main storyline of uh, the Star Wars franchise for number one, where, of course, Anakin Skywalker is a young, eager pod racer ready to show the world what he can do. So we, uh, we meet with Anakin and a lot of other different characters, um, and the game actually opens up with the traditional... Even in the games, they had to have that. That is like classic. classic. Yeah, <laughs> that was good time in there. Yeah, no, it's a it, and your performance of it. It's a shame they didn't just use that in the game. Of course, but, of course. Yeah, cappella version. But um, it actually uh, has a whole um, screen that comes down as well if you let it play out. And it goes for generations. The galactic pod racing circus has thrilled citizens of the Outer Rim territories with its fast and dangerous contents of repulsor and turbine-driven land vehicles. And it goes on to say um, about, you know, they need to defeat Sebulba. You know, Sebulba from the movies. Yeah. Yeah. Sebulba's a good sort of villain. Definitely. So the whole main of the game is obviously to race, be the fastest, be the winner, and, you know, be epic in the galaxy. So you actually, the characters you start off with, you start off with, uh, obviously, Anakin Skywalker. Obviously. Uh, a, a man, um, well, a creature, an alien called Dud Bolt. Uh, I'm not sure if people remember, the obviously, the film, but he's the one that looks like a, a, a crocodile slash oh, yeah. pig with the mouth. And he's actually a hitman. Um, you've got Enid Endcott, Alan Mack, Gascano, who has a long neck and apparently has lots of fingers, so he can do lots of trick moves and all that sort of stuff. And Oddy Manuel. But the magic characters you can unlock, it's, in, it's great. There's... 
17. <laughs> I definitely should have counted that before. Nice long pause. God, that's counted. a lot, isn't it? For, yeah. Especially for a game of that era, when you think... Well, uh, last week we were talking about Diddy Kong Racing, and that had like 8, or eight between 8 and 10. Mario Kart had like 8. So like having 17, and them not even being characters, you've just seen them for like a frame or two, or like a few seconds of film time. Yet they've now got this like whole bio and like game all to themselves. Well, overall, uh, there are 23 pod races uh, with an additional two cheat code character replacements in the Nintendo 64 version and 25 tracks over eight unique worlds. That's pretty... um, That's impressive. Yeah, it's pretty involved experience. Uh, when I found that out, I was just like, whoa, that is quite a few. So <laughs> I am not going to name all the different tracks because that would take me a while. But I can tell you that the different worlds are. Uh, we've got uh, Ando Prime, Aquilius, Barunda, Maltrez, Mongaza, Uvu 6, 11. I'm not sure. Ordo, Inada, and of course, Tatooine. Everyone and all of those were probably really, really important in the expanded universe until the expanded universe was got rid of. Yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, so that is pretty impressive for such an involved game. I mean, when, um, of course, they were producing this, developed and published by LucasArts, obviously, but it was originally only for the Windows PC in April 1999. Um, the development took about two years, but then they wanted to expand into different sort of... Because, of course, the more medias that they can hit, the better for their um, develop, uh, better for their payout. Yeah. Um, they, the whole feel of the development team, they really wanted it to feel like it was a fast experience, that you're really in the pod race, and they wanted you to feel the speed. And I do feel you get that from the game. There's mm. a lot of kind of like the way they portray it. If, if you think of the limitations they have with the graphics in those days, they've done a really good job to make it just feel fast, fast, fast. Yeah, like it definitely feels like a fast game. Like the environments move past you at a nice fast speed. So you feel like you're just like going really high speed, really dangerous. Um, and I think if you explode, you just respawn like a few feet down the line. Yeah. Well, the team had developed their physics simulation in the game from only a few short clips from the film given to them. So they actually took things physically from the film to make it more obviously authentic, which is great. Yeah, um, I, I guess they were just working on like, based off like the in-development film. Yeah. So it must have been like, the footage probably didn't even have all its like CGI done. Well, uh, the uh, John Knowles, which was the project leader, said that he wanted to make it feel like an eyeball-peeling racing game where you're going so fast, you're just nervous. I love that, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> so fast, you're like, oh, my God, <laughs> I'm going to die. <laughs> That's basically what he's saying, which is great. That, that is something really specific to go for. Not go so fast, you're, like, thrilled, you're excited. It's go so fast, you're, you're nervous. <laughs> you're, go you so fast, you're, you're crying. <laughs> Well, of course, our other racing games that we've been covering in these series have, of course, been a bit more cartoon-based, a bit more Nintendo's Nintendo-based, whereas this is the first one we've looked at, which is uh, based off of such... Like, off a movie, to be fair. I don't think we've... Apart first from third Bugs party Life, game, I think, of this season. Yeah. And um, you can really tell that. I mean, they're limited by their... Um, graphics and design purely because of the time this came out but considering uh, if you're comparing it to other racing games of the time it actually looks pretty good like the feel of the game the look of the game the way you feel when you're you're playing the game which I think is quite impressive yeah I remember it being like one of those ones which did just like obviously it was like it looks dated now but at the time you're like oh cool like every it looked like pod races like it wasn't just like because Anakin's obviously is quite circular in its design and it did like look circular it wasn't like blocky like but some of course, early polygon games some of these characters some of the 25 char- um, characters and pod races and stuff like that they of course because of the lore what comes with Star Wars 
there when I looked up some of the characters just to see a bit more of their background some of them have gone on to doing bits and pieces like one of one of them was a hitman one of them went round and stabbed Sir Bulba's back and all this kind of stuff and you think wow the background like storyline of Star Wars before they got rid of it was very involved and they made sure you feel that by including characters that personally I don't know from the movies but there's going to be someone out there going oh yes I'm so glad such and such is in there it's quite funny when you think and you get all these extra details about how these really were like underground races like murder betrayal and like sabotage happen all the time and then you think like oh yeah Anakin was like nine (laughs) he was just involved (laughs) yeah so yeah, it's weird to think that Anakin's only nine compared to all these like grown up races, but he does, you know, you love being Anakin, you love being the underdog and like beating all the races, which is great. I mean, um, for the N64 version and the Sega Dreamcast version, they actually, for multiplayer, they made it um, a split screen, but on the Windows and Macintosh version, you were allowed to play in local area network which uh, is a multiplayer that could support up to eight players, which is quite an advanced sort of thing for the, you know, it's early days multiplayer, isn't it? Like, more than just the standard two. <laughs> yeah, no, imagine, like, getting together for, like, because um, what PC gamers used to do around then was uh, what was known as a LAN party, whereas everyone basically connected to each other through, like, the internet in someone's house, which is a LAN and like everyone would just be sat there on their laptops imagine that must to be fair like get like a few drinks in get like maybe a takeaway that would probably make quite a fun game just to uh, mess around with with an evening with like a group of friends oh definitely that would be cool oh, why <laughs> definitely as the night went on and the alcohol got more and more uh, <laughs> free reign so um the structure of the game uh, players can enter a tournament with a character wherein the place in first, second or third earns the player prizes, prize winners if chosen and unlocks champion for the track. Not all track features unlockable races, however. Winning a race also unlocks new tracks. With prize money, players can buy upgrades to this podcast. And you know how we were saying about Donkey Kong having so many items? Hmm. This this game has so many upgrades. Like, really? it, it feels like so many upgrades because these are just the sections. These aren't the number of upgrades you can get because you choose a section and then you do an upgrade from that section. You've got mm. traction, turning, cooling, acceleration, air brake, top speed, and repair. Almost like, um, almost prob- like the, the rally games you'd get. Yeah, which I thought was pretty involved. I thought that was really impressive. But so, of course, you collect the money, you make winnings, and you improve your pod racer to make it even faster. I thought that was a nice added extra to the game. So it's not just the tracks, it's not just the characters, which, of course, you've got plenty of to unlock as well. Yeah. Like, it's maybe it's maybe it was just targeting that slightly older audience as well. Well, I suppose if you're watching Star Wars, I mean, you do have the child fan base but this was before, of course before Disney took over it was more for the teenager slash adult really I wasn't mean it? you say it's, Disney it's uh, Return of the Jedi had Ewoks in it and this film had Jar Jar Binks <laughs> the shame of the Star Wars franchise sorry any Jar Jar Binks fans out there so but... it's always been a little bit for kids yeah um but yeah, with all those. Like, I think this game's mechanics. focus though was more yeah the older ones rather than the other two. Uh, well, the other two main racing games we've just talked about in our last two episodes. Please check them out. Um, were more obviously child based. The design and everything as well. Yeah, more colourful, more cartoony. So um, to play the game, you've got the tournaments mode, which of course you complete. The championship, become the winner, lots of money. Woohoo! You've got the free race, so you can practice, and it helps unlock certain tracks. And then, of course, you've got the special time attacks, race against the clock. And then, of course, you've got multiplayer as well, which is your standard sort of racing MO these days. Hmm. So, but, um, yeah, did you know that Jake Lloyd, who played Anakin in the films, Lewis lead who played Sir Bulba and a couple of others reprise their roles in this game so voice oh, acting voice, yeah. voice files yeah. Ah. 
which is pretty cool. So not only did it look, they get um, clips of the film to make it look like the film, they uh, even got the voice actors to uh, voice their characters. So that it was a very involved game, if you think it's just a racing game. Yeah, back when um, a film's... There's a little bit of this in when we talked about um, A Bug's Life last year. But, like, movie tie-in games back in the day had so much more work put into them, I feel. Yeah. Well, yeah, apart from Bug's, Bug's Life was a bit... I don't well, know. even that, like, compared to now, I think you might just get, like, a mobile game. Yeah. I, I, the mobile industry has made certain things more easier for companies and so they put less effort into it I feel when you can just do a mobile app rather than putting out a fully fledged game hmm. but um, yeah I, I suppose um, I can't really think of any film or even series to game that I've played recently it's normally rehashes or original content yeah no I, was, I think I was thinking about this the other day there, there are the occasional tie-ins. Hmm? Walking Dead has a bunch of games, but hmm. I think they're mobile-based. No, they're on the PC. Oh, are they? That's good. It's Telltale Games, so uh... it'll probably be telling a. Di- it won't be. I think it's telling a different story, so it's not like an adaption. It's just like the same world, maybe. Because hmm. the same company made like some stuff on like Back to the Future, but that was just like a different story in the world. Question: What film? I'm going to go film only. Would you love to see as a game? Oof. Um, does it have to be like a recent film? No, it can be any sort of film you like. God, out of all films. <laughs> Just go with your gut. What, what comes s- to mind straight away? I mean, part of me was <clears throat> thinking like, take um, the Spider-Man game they released for PS4. Yeah. And do it like through the story of Spider-Verse oh so you could jump from verse to verse and maybe experience the different universes well you've got like oh, more and more the art style and you're playing as Miles Morales not Peter Parker and it just follows like the plot of the game and like the, 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 the plot of the film <laughs> the pink one will be funny <laughs> yeah like Looney Tunes world uh, how about you same question back at you my immediate Immediate thought went to um, I, I really love the labyrinth. Oh yeah, and that got a board game, didn't it? It did get a board game, so it would be quite a simple concept, but it'd be like I don't more a, more of a PC game, like making your way through the maze. But it'd be really nice to explore certain um, artwork mm. and make it a very pretty game, a bit like um, Cuphead. Oh, like yeah, when yeah. retro Mickey Mouse, this would be really interesting to go retro Jim Henderson. Yeah, that 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 could be really interesting, couldn't it? Using mm. like taking full advantage of his like uh, history. And did uh, you know? Uh, slight side note, sorry about something okay. completely different. Uh, there's actually a book out that goes into all the different characters that live in the labyrinth, not just the main ones, and it has a background and where they live and how they act. You could really explore that in a game. Oh, nice. Yeah, so you could expand the universe quite a bit. Anyway, back to <laughs> back to Star Wars. <laughs> back to the game we're supposed to be talking about. Well, I would mention about si- soundtrack, but I feel I've already uh, <coughs> repraised that role because obviously the soundtrack was done by LucasArts and from the film. Um, but did you know time for quirky information did you know that in March 2004 GMR magazines rated this game 5th best Star Wars game of all time not not just a racist game best Star Wars game of all time in, in what year did you say that was? 2004 okay yeah and in 2011 it won the Guinness World Records best selling sci-fi racing game it sold 3.12 million copies worldwide outselling Wipeout and f x Oh really? Yeah it was a very well received game like very yeah, well received I was about to say then where did f x come in on that but I no. suppose it was released on more platforms wasn't it? It was released on more platforms I mean let's be honest 
Uh, I didn't really have to explain about Star Wars because there's such a big fan base out there. And um, if you didn't have an uh, N64, then you would probably have a Dreamcast and yeah. 3.12 million. That's not bad, is it? No, not bad at all. So yeah. And there was also a sequel to the Star Wars Racer. And it was called Star Wars uh, Racer Revenge. It was released in 2002 on the PlayStation 2. Huh. I had no idea it had a, a sequel. But yeah. Um, hmm. I never knew it had a sequel. That's quite interesting. Yeah. But yeah, it, um, it was a really well... Uh, received game and I've got a minute, I've got quite fond memories of it but still if you're uh, linking it back to uh, the racing games that we've already reviewed oh I still say Mario 64 uh, Mario Kart is my favorite yeah I think yeah I think it's one of those isn't it because if you like we did last week about um, Diddy Kong racing if you compare uh, the Star Wars Racers is better in so many different categories. I mean, it's better graphics. Uh, it links in with the film. If you're a Star Wars fan, boom, you're gonna you're gonna love this game basically. But I still have fonder memories of replaying Mario Kart over Star Wars Racers. I mean, we're, yeah, we're probably getting some comments like. You guys just have rose tinted glasses for Mario Kart 64. <laughs> yeah, I suppose this is the second time we've mentioned this, haven't we? Mm. I was going to say, this is kind of why we came up with this show. It's just so you get to talk about games we liked when we were kids. Oh, yeah. There's, there's going to be nostalgia glasses in literally every episode. <laughs> um, Maybe we should have a warning before you start listening to this. Warning, nostalgia glasses are on. <laughs> but then, okay, so we're saying Mario Kart 64 uh, is the racing king. But did you? I preferred this one to Diddy Kong Racing. Really? Diddy Kong yeah. getting knocked into third place. In my books, yeah, purely because um, I did like the element of the pod racing. I know I said about the flying in the Diddy Kong Racing game last week, but um, the pod racing, of course, was a completely different element, and it had a lot of more modern concept for games than Diddy Kong Racing did with the element of money and upgrading your vehicle and all that kind of stuff. Huh. Yeah, okay. That's that's fair enough. Yeah, I think it depends what you want from a, from a game. To be fair, I think it's a difficult one because... It is. It, they're both, like, appealing to the different bits of me because a bit of me is like, oh, yeah, I get to upgrade my ship, get to do all that, I get to redevelop it. But the other bit of me is like... It's like cartoony fun game and I get to fly planes and drive boats yeah it really depends I mean I don't think as we've said from before uh, this is com completely our own personal feelings on these games and there's not a right or wrong answer it's just what you remember from mm. the experience really but I do I do love the I, I know the first three movies as in not the first three but the second three made but the first three in the series were kind of I don't know, taken with a pinch of salt, but the, I don't think there's anything wrong with the pod racing. The pod racing was one of my highlights from the first film. Yeah, I think it was it was a lot of fun. And yeah, was... and you've got this, as you said, nine-year-old kid, and he's like, woo, let's beat all these adults at their end game and win all the money! <laughs> After he almost gets, like, lapped. Yeah. He used the force. Obviously. Yeah, that's he used the, the force. That's the answer to everything in Star Medichlorians. Wars. Medichlorians. Medichlorians. <laughs> but yeah, what were your fondest memories from this game? I think it was like the one bit I remember quite vividly is the fact that you were able to turn it on its side to get through small cracks. Yeah. And that was like quite a fun thing. Well, as long as you obviously remember to do it. And the fact that your ship was quite easily <laughs> destructible, but it. It was just a bit of a time penalty, but really didn't matter. Like other games, if you like crashed, it was like, oh, you've retired from the race and you'll lose a <laughs> life. This, I think, it was just like, like that green transparent arrow was just like, come on, we're going to put you back here. Come on, <laughs> you can do it. Um, we believe in you. Yeah, and I think it, it would, it just, like you said, I think it felt different from the, the other games we've talked about as well, because of obviously it's hover and 
it really did emulate the film very well. Oh, yeah. You really felt like you're racing on Tatooine with uh, the other racers and Sebulba. I mean, there was no cut scenes or anything, but the uh, games at those point didn't really have them. There wasn't like Anakin talking to Sebulba before a race and, oh, I'm Sebulba going to get you or whatever it was. Um, it was just, you know, you change your character, you you race and you're like, yeah, let's do this. An- another game where if you wanted any um, any story, you had to read read the hand, like the materials, whether you had to read like the instruction manual or the comics. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, this game in the Star Wars universe In the lore connected to Star Wars, Anakin never races on any different planets. So it's kind of rejected a little bit from the lore. I mean, the characters go into the lore in Star Wars, obviously, some of them more than others. But Mm. him racing on different planets doesn't happen in the storylines. You probably can't afford it in, like... Well, yeah, I mean, the the main storyline is, like... You know, he does it a couple of times on Tatooine to get money, and that's it. So, mm. of course, this was more for the game story, which is yeah, outside you, of the law. After you've just had your popular film with your popular new character, Anakin Skywalker, you can't be like... No, oh. he's not allowed off-planet because his mum says he has to go home. He's got, <laughs> he's, a, got... he's got a curfew, I'm sorry. He's got his chores to do. He's at <laughs> Watto's shop. He is a slave, by the way. <laughs> he can't leave planet. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> But yeah, so um, that was Star Wars <coughs> Pod Races. Um, yeah, it was yeah, it was a good game. Really enjoyed it. But um, in the grand scheme of racing games, it uh, it wasn't one of my top ones. It was an enjoyable play. Yeah, it's one of those games where when we're like, oh yeah, let's let's revisit that one. I haven't thought about that game in a while. And then you start thinking back to it and you start looking up the stuff about it and you're like, actually... Actually, yeah. No, I've. this is a great thing about this little um, uh, big nostalgia that we're doing is that a lot of these games, since doing this, I've gone back to play because I'm just like, oh, yeah, I remember this game. <laughs> Reminds us of, like, what, what the games were actually like because there's... There's yeah, there's some games I think when we're putting together like our big long list at the beginning, I was like, Oh my god, I haven't thought about that in years. Yeah. Well, hopefully it's doing it for you listeners as well. Please um leave some comments in below if you agree or disagree with um what we've come across today. And uh, yeah, check out the games as well. They're lots of fun to play. If you've never played this game and you love the Star Wars franchise, you honestly can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. So Easy. Easy, easy, easy. Choice. Yeah. But yeah, um, I guess now it's to say, like, well, we're doing these shows weekly at the minute, so if you join us next week, the game will be going back to one of our big ones because it will be Banjo Tooie. Woohoo! Uh, we'll be talking about the, the, the Banjo sequel, all of its like development, the, the quirks, the secrets. And all that. I think it should be a good episode. And if you don't um, understand why I went woohoo, please check out our um, YouTube site and check out our, um, our other channels and stuff for Banjo Kazooie content. Yes. Yeah, we're big Banjo Kazooie. We're Banjo Tubers. Oh, yeah. Yes, we are. <laughs> so it's going to be a good, good game. Yes. Good episode. Yes. Please come and check it out. I've been Vicstar. I've been Halloween. And we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye! Bien in. Do 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 do. Bien in. Do 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 do. Bien in. Do 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 do